Now who says eating healthy has to be all that bad? What if I told you that you could eat a fried chicken sandwich, an air fried chicken sandwich, that is both packed full of flavor and protein and half the calories? Well, I'm about to make your dreams come true. So let's get to cooking. I was blown away when I tried this air fried chicken sandwich, and when I discovered it only had 500 calories, I had no choice but to show you how to make it. The first step is to prepare your Asian slaw. This is very simple, so start by quartering half of the cabbage and slicing it as thin as possible. This will allow for the dressing to infuse into the cabbage faster. Transfer to a bowl, and next you'll thinly slice half of a red onion, transfer to the bowl, four green onions thinly sliced, transfer to the bowl, finally grate one to two medium sized carrots, transfer to the bowl, and lastly mince about one tablespoon or so of fresh ginger, and transfer to the bowl. You see what I'm doing here? So for the dressing, you'll add to the bowl three tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of rice vinegar, and one teaspoon of sesame oil. Give the slaw a solid mix and set aside to let the flavors develop. Now, if you follow the channel for some time, you know that I'm a sauce guy. So the next thing we need to make is the sriracha aioli. Add half a cup of Duke's mayonnaise to a bowl. Shout out to Duke mayonnaise. Still waiting for that sponsorship though followed by two tablespoons of homemade sriracha. And if you haven't seen that shorts video yet, there's a link in my description, so give it a watch after this. Next is one tablespoon of honey, half a teaspoon of sesame oil, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Give all those ingredients a good mix until well combined, and set aside again so the flavors marry. Now, we can get to this juicy, succulent, sweet and spicy air fried orange chicken. Take two chicken breasts and trim off any of the excess fat and skin, and cut the breasts in half. Now, you may be asking yourself, Sebastian, where did you get those beautiful Japanese knives? Well, I'm glad you asked. Thanks to my friends at Nakano Knives, they were generous enough to send me their high quality chef knives to test out. Nakano Knives was founded in 1918 through a long history of Japanese katana sword making. Thanks to their blacksmith with generations of swordsmith experience, Nakano Knives is able to create what is considered the sharpest blade in the world. Starting with the Mito Santoku knife from their Mito collection. Now this Santoku knife is fantastic. I was shocked at how light the knife felt in my hands and it must be due to the natural olive wood handle. The feel and balance of this knife really felt good in my hands and I was able to slice through the vegetables with such ease. Overall, I was really impressed. Now this next knife I was super excited about and that is Nakano's 33 layer Damascus steel Japanese chef knife from the Mercator collection. Take a moment to admire their blacksmith's attention to detail. This blade is gorgeous. The weight and balance of the knife just fell right. Slicing through meats and vegetables requires zero effort. The blade just glides through any meat or vegetables such ease. I mean, if you've ever wanted a high-end Japanese chef knife with both durable and beautiful to look at, then this is your knife. From the Makarta handle made with the high-pressured resin and hemp cutting cloth to the 33-layer Damascus steel blade, this knife screams three-star Michelin chef quality. And it doesn't stop there. The Kano Knives website features a variety of different high-grade Japanese knives from their four collection of knives, plus additional accessories such as knife sharpeners and cutlery. I provided a link in the description, and if you use my code register for dinner, you'll receive 5% off your order, and I'll receive a small commission, which helps my channel greatly. Now back to this chicken sandwich. Now that we have the chicken breast sliced in half, it's time to season your chicken tits with a generous sprinkle of both salt and pepper, paprika, and garlic powder. Flip your breasts over and repeat this process. For the breading station, I like to take two large eggs and crack them into a small bowl and add a splash of water. Give it a good mix until it's well combined, and for an extra crunchy texture, I'm using the cornflakes as my breading. Make sure you're seasoning your cornflakes with the exact same seasonings that you use for your chicken breast, and use the best tools you have, your hands, and crush the cornflakes making sure to evenly distribute the seasoning throughout. Grab your seasoned chicken and completely coat in the egg wash before transferring over to your cornflakes, and bury your chicken in the cornflakes and use your hands to press down the chicken to ensure the cornflakes stick and there's absolutely no pockets of exposed meat. Transfer the chicken onto your air fryer rack and spray with the olive oil. Set in your air fryer and fry at 390 degrees for 22 minutes, making sure to flip your chicken breast halfway through the cooking process. Now, in the meantime, we can get on to making the orange glaze. Get a pan to medium heat and add in half a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice, which for me was about three oranges. Immediately add in three tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sriracha, and one tablespoon of honey, followed by the zest of one orange. Give it a good mix and bring it to a boil. You'll then whisk in your cornstarch slurry, which was about one tablespoon of cornstarch and half a cup of water. This will help thicken up your sauce. Continue to cook down until your desired thickness, and you can also use this time to toast your buns, which is a must for any proper sandwich. To start the sandwich assembly, take your toasted buns and drizzle the bottom half with your sriracha aioli, followed by a healthy scoop of that delicious Asian slaw. By now, your fried chicken should be golden brown and delicious. I mean, just look how crispy and crunchy that cornflake crust looks. 
So transfer your fried chicken and submerge that into your tangy orange sauce. Make sure you completely coat the chicken in that delicious sauce so that it's just dripping with goodness. Now you can gently nestle your chicken breast on top of your Asian slaw and finish it off with another drizzle of that spicy sriracha aioli. And for a little extra texture and presentation, sprinkle some sesame seeds on top. I swear, this sandwich almost looks too good to eat, but I'm just kidding. Now you're telling me that this is only 500 calories because truthfully this smells incredible. So the only thing left to do is of course test out that crunch factor. Are you serious right now? Dude, look how juicy that is. That is crazy good. The slaw kind of cools down that heat from that sriracha aioli. The crunch from the chicken, honestly, cornflakes may be the way to go from now on when you fry your chicken or air fry your chicken, whatever. But nonetheless, this is fantastic. But as always, if you think that this is good, then you gotta see how I make a wonderful steak sandwich with my all too famous chimichurri sauce. So make sure you hit that link down below. And as always, stay hungry, my friends. Let's munch.